Hello, hello, Crafty Crandall here, and today I wanted to do kind of an interesting video wherein I practice some painting. I don't do a lot of practice on camera, but I figured it would be fun to do today because I'm always saying in my videos how I want to improve on certain things. One of those things, and the one that I'm going to explore today, is hair. I am terrible at painting hair. And so I wanted to do so today with both watercolor and gouache so that I can kind of see the differences, uh, establish my technique a little bit better for both of them, and also just share a bit more of my process as far as both of these mediums are concerned. As far as materials today, I'm going to be using student grade paint for both varieties. So I have my Arteza gouache and I have my Shinhan watercolors today, and I am going to paint the same thing with both of them for you here today. I'm going to use the same sketchbook for this and I am also going to be painting the same reference photo and that photo is going to be none other than the Evermore album art because I am obsessed. I went to listen to music today and it just happened to show up on my playlist and so I listened to it today and that is what I want to paint for this video. Without any further ado, let's get into the painting and I will talk more about my process as the video transpires. The first thing that I did for this piece was I created a sketch of the album art on both sides of the paper. I did this freehand and then I taped it down with my MT brand tape. So the right side will be the gouache, which as you can see, I had a little bit of an accident with. Unfortunately, my gray gouache is no longer. Uh, and the left side will be the watercolor. And so after I had finally set everything up and got ready to paint, I went ahead and I laid down my base layer of watercolor. Because watercolor takes longer to dry, I knew that I needed to start there. I then went forward and continued layering in gouache as well. So I tried to work simultaneously on both pieces so that I could kind of complete them both at around the same time and make the video a little bit more interesting as far as seeing them both come alive at the same time. I continued to do this back and forth throughout the entire hair painting process. Um, I attempted with the watercolor to go obviously light to dark as that is a requirement of watercolor. And then with the gouache, I actually started laying in the highlights and the shadows like individually first and then tried to blend them together to make it more seamless. I think this approach worked relatively well, but I think that in part some of my errors throughout the entirety of these pieces is that I couldn't get the colors right. <laughs> um, these watercolors are ones that I'm a little bit less familiar with using which is why I wanted to use them for this piece is to get a little bit more comfortable with them. And then for the gouache, I always find that mixing gouache colors is a little bit difficult. So this was definitely a challenge for me, but one that I wanted to face head on and really enjoy the process of. After all of that, <laughs> I kind of got to a point where I realized that I needed to take a step back and reevaluate the hair because my current methodology for completing the hair was literally just to go at it in a highlights and shadows kind of breakdown and I wasn't really getting the shapes or the flow of the hair down and so while I thought that I had decent contrast throughout the piece I thought that I didn't really show that the hair was in a braid very well. And so at this point, you can kind of see an overview of where I got to and just generally what it looks like at this stage when I realized that I kind of needed to add a little bit more, not dimensionality necessarily, but just a little bit more indication of the flow of the hair. And so that was what I tried to tackle next. <laughs> and I thought that it worked okay overall. I definitely want to reapproach maybe a similar piece or a similar hairstyle in like just a hairstyle piece so that I can kind of work on understanding hair a little bit better. If you have any tips for me, I would really love if you would leave them for me down below in the comments because this is something that I'm really trying to work on and something that I really enjoyed kind of tackling 
in this piece. Again, I, I really appreciate if you have any tips specifically for watercolors and gouache or just in general for capturing the likeness of hair in any artistic medium. I then moved forward <laughs> with the rest of the piece. So I decided to take a break from the hair and move in to start doing some of the backgrounds because the background of this album art is really pretty and I really wanted to kind of incorporate that into these pieces. So I started with a flat gray wash for the gouache side and then used the wet on wet technique to kind of establish the haziness of the background for the watercolor piece. I absolutely love how the beginning of the wet on wet technique worked for the watercolor. I think that it exactly captured what I wanted it to do. Whereas I had to get a little bit more creative with the gouache side in capturing the background. That said, I think that I did a little bit better job with the shapes of the background pieces, like the trees, the mountains, etc., in the gouache piece. Whereas I like the tone and the colors of the watercolor piece better personally. I'd be really interested in hearing your thoughts down below as to which piece you prefer from both a background perspective and also obviously the hair, which is what my focus really was. Overall, I think that that comment kind of holds true. There are aspects of the gouache piece that I really loved. I think that in starting like the coat that she was wearing, I think it did a really good job of capturing the colors of the coat that Taylor was wearing on the gouache side. Whereas on the watercolor side, I couldn't really get the brown tone correct, which then made the entire piece look a little bit miscolored throughout the entire thing. <laughs> so I would be interested to hear again, how you guys feel about it. Like, which do you think that I did better? Do you have any tips for improvement from there? And um, just generally, which one did you like better? Overall, from a gouache versus watercolor perspective, I think that I liked the tonality that the gouache lended more. I think the colors were easier to work with for this particular piece. I think like the stock colors of the gouache itself worked really well. I think that the watercolor, however, was in general easier to use to achieve the background of this piece because it is a hazier background. I found it very difficult to get the texture and the hazy effect, if you will, with the gouache. And so the piece itself kind of loses some of that distancing or that um, like the, the camera effect of the piece, if you will. However, that being said, overall, I am more of a watercolor user than a gouache user, so that might also just be because that is my preferred medium and a medium that I am more familiar with. I mentioned again, in case you missed it, this watercolor was the Shinhan watercolor, and so it was a little bit uh, more difficult to use than the watercolor that I use all of the time. But I really wanted to push myself outside of my boundaries and to use materials that I'm less familiar with because that is the essence of practice. <laughs> this piece was solely for practice. I wanted to gauge my skills and kind of get better, not only at drawing hair, which I've already mentioned, but just at painting in general. I wanted to test my processes to see how I would create each of these pieces and what my process would be, how I would approach it. Because I think that your approach kind of really dictates how well a piece turns out in the end. As you can see at this point, I was almost done with these pieces. I just had a couple more finishing touches as far as the watercolor piece. Bringing out the browns as best I could, I added a little bit more red tone and just really tried to bring it back to the tone I needed. <laughs> Unfortunately, as you'll see in the end result, I don't really achieve that final base tone that the actual reference photo has, but I tried. I knew what I needed to improve on, I just didn't know how to do it. So that kind of goes back again to the approach phase. <laughs> If you don't know how to achieve something, then you can try a bunch of things and maybe get lucky and get there. But 
it will just be a lot more streamlined if you already know how to do it. And that's true of anything. I mean, I run into that at work all the time. Once I understand a process and know how to complete it, either from like a program state of, state of mind or from like in general, a knowledge state of mind, um, it just goes smoother. And I think that really applies here with both of these paintings as far as understanding the medium and understanding how to get from point A to point B. Now please enjoy some paint peeling as I know that everyone on YouTube tends to enjoy. I think that it was a lot of fun and I hope that you like the final pieces that I have created here. In general, the tape peeled very well off of this paper. This is the fluid watercolor paper in my uh, travelogue travel watercolor journal and I'm using the MT brand masking tape. This tape again is phenomenal. If you've seen my artist pet peeves video then you know that I absolutely hate it when the tape tears up my paper and that did not happen at all with these pieces and I was very glad for it. <laughs> I highly recommend this tape if you have not found it already. It is fantastic and just makes for a much more enjoyable painting experience because I can actually peel it off the paper and not have to worry so much about potentially tearing it. You'll see that I did still use kind of a slow and steady approach, <laughs> so I would recommend that anyway, regardless of what type of tape you're using. But if you have not had masking tape that works this well, I would recommend this tape. I'll try to leave a link for it down below. Not sponsored, obviously, or anything. It's just a tape that I have really appreciated throughout my watercolor journey to get those nice, crisp, clean edges that we all so desire when painting in this manner. Here we have the final pieces. Please let me know how you liked them down below. Uh, I had a lot of fun painting these. I think that it was a great exploration into painting hair and into using the various mediums that I really enjoy and just generally getting some mileage and painting practice in. I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Please like this video if you liked it. Consider subscribing to my channel down below. I post new videos every single Tuesday and occasionally on Friday regarding art and book related topics. Thank you guys again. I do appreciate it and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!